The meeting will please come to order. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Wilmette. I now ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Sullivan. Here. Trustee Barrow. Here. Trustee Dodd. Here. Trustee Kersman. Here. Trustee Kennedy is absent. Trustee Plunkett. Here. And President Polinski. Here. Uh, so we do have a quorum. Uh, Trustee Kennedy was feeling ill tonight um, and is unable to join us tonight, but six of seven is a quorum. Uh, this meeting is being conducted remotely via the Microsoft Teams software. Uh, I now ask Peter Skiles, our Director of Administrative Services, to explain some logistics to members of the public who are joining us tonight. Thank you, President Blinsky. Okay, so everybody will have started the meeting tonight muted, and when President Blinsky calls for public comment, if you've joined us with the Teams client, you can toggle your mute status by clicking on the microphone in the meeting toolbar up near the top of your screen. Um, just in case I overlook somebody who is dialed in to the meeting tonight, you can toggle your mute status by pressing star six on your telephone. And just a note that only attendees can unmute themselves. No one can unmute another attendee. And if anybody is having technical difficulties tonight and has a public comment you'd like to make, you can head over to the YouTube live channel, which will be dis discussed here in a moment, provide your comment over there, and I will read it back into the record in the meeting here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Skiles. Um, for those watching this video in the future, the state of Illinois is currently under a gubernatorial disaster proclamation, uh, which was issued by Governor Pritzker due to the coronavirus global pandemic. As a result, all in-person village governmental meetings have been canceled. However, the state has amended the Open Meeting Act to permit electronic meetings of governmental bodies like the Village Board during a gubernatorial disaster proclamation. So we are conducting our business tonight in accordance with state law. As usual, this meeting is being broadcast live on our local access uh, cable channel six uh, and on the internet um, on our YouTube channel. And I'll read the URL for you. It's youtube.com slash user slash village of Wilmet slash live. There's no spaces or dots or dashes in that. Uh, one more time, uh, for those who are watching on channel six, uh, YouTube has some uh, incremental functionality and you may want to switch over. Again, it's uh, www.youtube.com slash user slash village of Wilmet slash live. A recording of this meeting will be archived on the Village's YouTube website as we do with all of our televised public meetings. A remote meeting obviously requires a different mechanic for public participation, so to ensure our residents, business owners, and other interested parties have the opportunity to participate in this meeting, uh, we have solicited public comment via email. Uh, if you send an email to public comment at wilmette.com prior to the start of this meeting, uh, your email has been provided to the board members and it will be included in the minutes of the meeting, uh, but it will not be read during the meeting. Members of the public who are watching the broadcast can participate during our designated public comment periods by submitting comments through the YouTube live chat feature. A member of the village staff will read your comment to the village board. Now, for those of you who have connected to the meeting via Microsoft Teams or via the telephone at the appropriate time, I'll ask people to speak up if they'd like to make a public comment. Uh, because of the logistical difficulties of not being uh, in person, um, I will first just ask people to identify themselves as someone who would like to address the board. I'll assemble a list and I'll call on individuals person by person for their turn to speak. Uh, for people speaking during public comment, they will be allotted three minutes to address the board just as they are during an in-person meeting. All comments from the public, regardless of how they are received, will be recorded in the meeting's minutes as we typically do. Now I'm about to mute everyone, including the trustees and the staff. Okay, so everyone's muted. Um, please uh, keep your connection on mute until you are ready to speak. Now, before each meeting, the Village Board uh, members receive a packet of agenda materials. Uh, these materials are also posted on Wilmette.com on the Friday before our meeting so that residents and other interested parties can review the very same materials uh, which the trustees receive. Uh, this week's packet contained uh, 274 pages. So we'll move on to item two, which is public comment. Uh, as I said, at an in-person meeting during public comment, uh, individuals are allotted up to three minutes to address the board on an item which is not on the agenda. Uh, however, uh, this meeting is being conducted remotely, so we have a different procedure. Uh, public comments which were submitted by email in advance of the meeting uh, have been provided to board members, are part of the public record, but will not be read during the meeting. And I would now ask uh, people who are watching on YouTube Live to submit comments uh, for the village staff to read. Uh, you can find the chat window to the right of the YouTube Live video window. Uh, while they are typing, I will ask if there's any individuals who have connected to the meeting via Microsoft Teams or via the telephone 
uh, who would like to address the board, uh, I ask individuals to now identify themselves. Uh, again, you have to unmute yourself, and if you are dialed in via the telephone, you have to hit star six on your phone as well, not just uh, the mute button on the phone. So are there any individuals who are in attendance at the meeting who would like to address the board? Okay, Mr. Skiles, uh, were there any individuals who typed any public comment into the YouTube live chat box? No comments, Mr. President. Okay, uh, so we'll move on to item three, which is the consent agenda. Uh, as described on the agenda, items which are routine business that are not normally debated by the village board are placed on the consent agenda. Uh, tonight, well, first off, all items uh, begin with the number three are on the consent agenda. So if tonight that means items uh, 3.1 through item 3.21. Uh, that is the consent agenda tonight. Items on the consent agenda are up for approval tonight. If an item is not removed by a member of the audience and is not removed by one of the trustees, uh, the item will be approved and will not be discussed. So let me begin by asking, is there any member of the audience who would like to remove an item from the consent agenda? People who are watching on YouTube Live should now submit their requests. And are there any individuals who have connected to the meeting via Microsoft Teams or via the telephone uh, who would like to remove an item from the consent agenda. Um, I'd ask you to identify yourself now if uh, you would like to remove an item from the consent agenda. And again, please remember you have to unmute yourself or even star six and unmute yourself um, if you would like to uh, address the board. Okay, hearing none, Mr. Skiles, was there, were there any uh, requests that came in via YouTube Live? No comments, Mr. President. OK, thank you. So uh, I'll now ask if there are any items that any of the trustees would like to remove from the consent agenda. You guys are all muted, so if you're I see lots of head nodding, but not everybody. Um, not everybody's on my screen. Uh, OK, may I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved. That was Trustee Sullivan. Trustee Dodd, well, you're you already on the You should give it to Trustee Dodd. You should give it to Trustee Dodd since it's a big deal for her on the administration committee once. I'll second okay. her. <laughs> All right. So uh, note for the record that uh, the, the motion was from Trustee Dodd and the second was from Trustee Thank Sullivan. You, Trustee Sullivan. <laughs> um, uh, we okay with that, Mr. Stein? Yes, that is fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, always good to check with your lawyer, right, Mr. Right, Trustee Barrow? <laughs> <laughs> All right, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion to adopt the consent agenda? Trustee Sullivan. Aye. Trustee Barrow? Aye. Trustee Dodd? Aye. Trustee Kersman? Aye. Trustee Plunkett? Aye. And President Belinsky? Aye, so the motion carries. Uh, the consent agenda has been adopted. Uh, if you were here for an item on the consent agenda, it was just approved. And again, I'll clarify for people. Again, all, all items meeting with the number three um, uh, have been approved, and that includes uh, land use committee item 3.2, uh, as well as all the other items uh, that begin with number three. So if you were here for an item on the consent agenda, it was just approved, and there'll be no further discussion of those items uh, or any of the other items on the consent agenda. So. Excuse me, you are free to uh, log off uh, now or uh, certainly welcome to hang around for the rest of the meeting. Uh, we'll move on to uh, item four, which is report of officers. Uh, item 4.1 is adoption of resolution 2021-R-14 uh, commemorating the contributions of Fire Chief Benjamin Wozni. Um, and I will read, um, I will read the resolution. Um, offer up uh, the floor to the trustees and then this is a resolution it does say adoption so i believe i will need a motion and a roll call vote to actually adopt the resolution so uh, again this is resolution uh, number 2021-r-14 uh, a resolution commemorating the contributions of benjamin wasney uh, whereas benjamin wasney has faithfully served the village of Wilmette for 26 years serving as a firefighter paramedic and then ascending the ranks to lieutenant paramedic duty chief, deputy chief, and then fire chief. Uh, throughout his career, Mr. Wozni immersed himself into many specialty areas in the department, becoming a juvenile file fire setter intervention specialist and joining the technical rescue and underwater rescue teams, eventually serving as dive master for Wilmette and director of the mutual aid box alarm system division three water rescue team. 
Mr. Wozni worked tirelessly to secure grant funding for the purchase of a new tower ladder truck, as well as numerous other improvements and enhancements to ensure Wilmette was a safer place for residents and firefighters alike. Through steady and thoughtful leadership, he navigated the village through the COVID-19 pandemic, maintaining staffing and operations while protecting fire department members and the community. Chief Wozni's commitment to the community's well-being was most evident through the very last days of his tenure as he worked tirelessly with Cook County to accelerate the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine to our residents and essential employees. Whereas Benjamin Wozni during his 26 years of service dedicated his career to serving others before himself, he managed all his duties as fire chief with compassion, skill, integrity, and devotion, always putting members of the community and the fire department first. And whereas the village board of trustees and the community at large wish to recognize the exemplary and dedicated services that Benjamin Wozni has given during his 26 years of service with the village of Wilmette. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the president and board of trustees of the village of Wilmette on behalf of all Wilmette residents does hereby acknowledge and pay tribute to Benjamin Wozni for his contributions to Wilmette. And then we express our sincere thanks and respect for him and wish him well in retirement and be it further resolved that a copy of this testimonial uh, resolution shall be duly executed and included and preserved in the minutes of the Village of Wilmette Board of Trustees, and that the original of this resolution shall be presented to Benjamin Wozni, adopted February 9th, 2021. Um, normally in a, in a board meeting, we would applaud, and I think we can still do that in a, in a virtual meeting. So for those of you who are on mute, we won't hear you, but. So um, I, I would just like to add my personal thanks uh, to Chief Wozni for his years of service to our community. Um, you are one of many of the dedicated uh, village staff members that uh, we are so lucky to have here in our community, and, and I thank you for your service. Um, I will open the floor uh, to the trustees if they'd like to add anything, and then um, I think we'll We'll vote on the resolution and then I will give the floor to uh, Chief uh, Wozni if he would like to make any comments. So any of the trustees who would like to uh, add something, um, just go right ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to jump in. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Chief Wozni as, in my capacity as chair of the Public Safety Committee, and it was a total privilege to do so. And uh, I hope the chief is listening. Uh, I had some of my most memorable moments as a trustee um, in, with you, and I just want to share one or two of those with all listeners here. Um, I was newly elected and not so comfortable in my chair when I was assigned to public safety, and my first meeting was with you and a room full of very concerned citizens uh, concerned about high-rise fire safety. And uh, that was my introduction to board service. And, you know, you keep your head under pressure so amazingly well. And I felt really comfortable working with you from the start in that difficult, difficult circumstance. And your calm demeanor and your thorough preparation was was evident. And I, I could tell the residents thoroughly respect it. And the other the other memory I have is just, we, I get to go to Red Center meetings with the chief. We go to Deerfield or to Wheeling for these meetings. And I could see from his peers just how much respect they have for, for Ben. And on one such trip, we got called to a fire. So that was kind of interesting. And besides just going, wow, okay, the lights are on. Um, my first instinct is just don't say anything stupid. Don't do anything stupid. Let the man go to work. And you know what? What I saw was concentration and determination. We were heading to who knows what. And I guess that is simply how it is every day uh, for people in uniform. You don't know what you're going to. And, uh, you know, it was really, it was nice to be able to observe this in action. And it concluded with a drive by to let his son know that he was okay, which is also, I guess, part and parcel of how things go when you're in uniform. And so 
those were some of my memorable experiences with the chief. And, you know, again, just, it was a privilege and I will keep this, that little um, memento you gave me when I first got started. I will uh, keep that and appreciate that for years to come. Anyhow, thanks for the opportunity, Mr. President, for me to be able to share my appreciation of Chief Wozni. Thank you, Trustee Kurzman. Um, any other trustees? I saw people unmute. Trustee Dodd's leaning in. I, I would like to just say a few words. Um, so um, first of all, um, Chief Wozni, um, we're obviously very sad to see you leave. Um, we're very excited for the new opportunity that brings to you um, and for, for you and your family. So um, I, like uh, Trustee Kurzman, also got an opportunity to work with you um, in as part of the public safety um, committee, as part of our first work around the um, sprinkler uh, issues, uh, Sheridan Road. But I did want to speak to you. I'm probably one of the few residents who have the opportunity to speak to you personally um, because I um, I happen to have a daughter who has some significant medical issues, um, and so I recognize um, you've uh, been here for about 26 years. My daughter's about 22 years old, and um, in her first several years of life, we've we had to call 911 significantly, um, and that's actually how you and I met initially, um, Ben, for lack of a better way to call you that. Um, and you've just, you know, from the first times I've met you through the rest of your career here, um, I've been so appreciative of all the work you've done um, on behalf of the village. Um, you know, I'm so appreciative of our uh, fire department on a personal level. Uh, given the issues that I've experienced with my own daughter, um, but then obviously um, having the opportunity to work with you on a more professional level as a trustee. So um, thank you for what you've done. Um, again, on behalf of my family and my daughter, Stacy, um, and then on behalf of as being a trustee and what you've done to help me get acclimated in this role, help me deal with the things that occurred um, as part of the public safety um, commission, and then just your thoughtful and incredible leadership during this entire pandemic. I thought um, what was written in this resolution was just really um, thoughtful and very, um, you know, it defined who you were and what you've done for our community. So uh, thank you, and we will miss you. Thank you, Trustee Dodd. Others? I'll chime in. <laughs> um, Chief Wozni, I also want to thank you, and I think I'm the third of the, the trilogy that was on the public safety committee with you um, having the tour of the high rises. And I just, I appreciate um, your creative thinking and your willingness to work with the residents. And I think that was much appreciated. And I, I wanna speak to, I know how much you have worked recently um, to be able to get our firefighter paramedics um, on the front lines with vaccines and um, it was so creative of you. And I'm sad that you won't be here to see that happen, but I, you will be near. And um, I'm hoping that that's gonna happen soon. And we just really appreciate um, that work and that collaboration that you have done recently with our neighboring communities um, to try to make that happen. So you will be missed and um, it's gonna be hard to fill your shoes. Thank you. Any other comments? You know, I, I would just echo, obviously, um, Chief Wozniak, and, and I'm going to be like Trustee Dodd, and, and I'm going to default to Ben, and I apologize only because I had the opportunity to meet you in more of a social setting, coaching our kids in basketball on Saturday mornings at St. Joseph's Gym. And, uh, you know, Admittedly, I didn't even know what you did then. You just, uh, it was fun to be with you on that Saturday. And all of a sudden you showed up in one of these meetings and I see, wow, you know, he's, he's one of our leaders in the fire community and uh, you've done great work. You, you've really made an impact in 26 years and not many people can say that about their career. And uh, you really made an impression, a lasting impression on Wilmette. Um, you had a tough job uh, coming in from the, uh, the chiefs before you who have built a phenomenal leading fire department and you also are lucky to say you're leaving it in a better place. Um, you have done incredible work. Your team is outstanding. You're one of the reasons you have, a, you lead a group of individuals uh, that um, are one of the reasons people live here because they have confidence that if the infant when they need you, you're there and you guys do great work and uh, 
selfishly, I'm a little sad to see you go just because uh, you're a class act, but now I guess I got to go to the lake to see you. So uh, you're not going that far. So congrats and thank you. Thank you, Trustee Sullivan. And President Belinsky, if I could just make a couple comments on behalf of the staff. Well, uh, thanks. Hey, Mike, one, um, <laughs> Trustee Barrow. Would you oh, like I'm to sorry, I forgot. My, my no, apologies. No, no, no problem there. You know, as the new as the new kid here, I would uh, simply add that as a longtime resident, you know that when you pick up the phone and dial 911, before you put it down, you'll hear the sirens. And that comes from that comes from leading and creating a department uh, that provides the highest service and provides the highest protection to our residents. So uh, congratulations, Chief. Uh, we'll look for you at the beach. Take care. Now, Mr. Brayman. All right. Where's Thank yours? You, <laughs> Sorry, Trustee Merrill. Uh, that's uh, all good. Yeah, so, you know, when Ben approached me that he was thinking of retiring, I, I was really sad for the organization and the community, but I was also really happy for Ben. Now, he's given 26 years of his life, as Trustee Sullivan had said, to the Wilmot Fire Department, and, and that really is significant. You know, ben was a true leader. He was thoughtful, pragmatic, mature, progressive, and I think ultimately the word that best describes him and his leadership was steady, and we really saw that in the past year. Now, when Ben asked for something from the manager's office, we knew it was important for the safety of our employees, for our community, or to improve upon the services we provide. And he delivered for our firefighters, paramedics, and our residents on a daily basis. Um, for those of us who know Ben well, we know he's he's too modest to really toot his own horn or, or to really you know talk about what he's accomplished. Uh, but you know, I did want to let the board know and the community know and our staff know that he single-handedly worked tirelessly through the month of December to secure the COVID-19 vaccine for our firefighter paramedics, as well as those in nearby communities, circumventing the Cook County process that was just taking too long and getting the job done for our employees on the front lines. He's also helped lead us to the precipice of piloting a COVID vaccination program, utilizing our local paramedics that'll help accel accelerate the rollout of the vaccination efforts uh, in Cook County, and this this project is going to serve as a model for all of suburban Cook County uh, as they look to expand uh, access to the vaccine. While these are only recent examples, there are so many more in Ben's history as chief, deputy chief, battalion chief, lieutenant, and firefighter paramedic, in which he made a true difference to our community. Uh, we're a stronger community due to Ben's work, and for that, we are all very grateful. So thank you, Ben. And um, you're not going far, so you're likely to hear from us uh, several times over the next many months. So thank you very much. Okay, so um, like I said, this is actually adoption of a resolution. So I would entertain a motion uh, to adopt resolution number 2021-R-14, uh, commemorating the contributions of Fire Chief Benjamin Wozni. So moved. Uh, that was Trustee Kurzman is our second. Second. And that was Trustee Barrow with the second. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion? <clears throat> Trustee Sullivan. Aye. Trustee Barrow. Aye. Trustee Dodd. Aye. Trustee Kurzman. Aye. Trustee Plunkett. Aye. And President Polinski. Aye. So the motion carries. The resolution has been adopted. Uh, Chief, if you can unmute yourself, uh, I'll give you a moment, then you can address the board and the community. Thanks, everybody, for those um, very kind and um, generous words. I, I really appreciate it. Um, first, to the to the board, um, I want to thank you on behalf of our fire department um, and the residents of Wilmette. Um, you have always served our department well and made sure that we had all the appropriate equipment that we needed. So I really appreciate that relationship um, that this board and, and past boards have had. Um, that is, it's a rarity and the support that you've given us is greatly appreciated by everybody um, in our ranks. Um, to, to Mike Brayman and the and the village senior staff, um, you know, over the past year, you guys and also made an excellent choice in um, hiring Mike as the village manager. Um, over this past year, um, we have had several conversations um, on the pandemic, personal issues, um, and both coming into these new roles for us uh, and trying to navigate and called it building the plane while we were flying it. 
Um, and if it wasn't for his leadership, um, we wouldn't be able to do that. So I really appreciate everything um, that he's done and the rest of the senior staff as well. We have a really great um, senior staff and I'm going to miss um, those senior staff meetings um, probably more than I should, but I, I definitely will miss seeing everybody. Um, so I fellow firefighters um, to the past firefighters. Um, I worked down at the beach as a lifeguard through uh, high school and college. And that's where I met some firefighters that were working down there on their days off as uh, supervisors. And they were the ones that kind of talked me into testing for the fire service. And uh, that, that's something they thought I would be good at. Um, so I thank them for putting me on that career path because um, God knows where I'd be now um, had I not met them. Uh, to our future, our current firefighters, um, nothing but um, gratitude and respect for everything that they do every day. Uh, again, when the pandemic hit, never missed a beat, never stayed home, um, constantly responded to all the calls, never complained. Um, so I really appreciate everything that they did um, in the service for our community. Um, and you are in good hands because they will continue to, to do that as well. Um, more importantly, I want to thank my my wife and my two kids. You know, I was I was looking back through some old paperwork as I was cleaning out my stuff and I found a commendation letter that I had received back in August of 2007. Um, some of you might remember we had a very big storm that rolled through um, and knocked out power and trees and I was at work for three days and I got a letter of commendation for being at work for for three days as we navigated through that. Um, what a lot of people don't realize um, outside of our inner circle is we were without power in my house for four days and my wife was nine months pregnant with our youngest um, and she spent three days making sure the generator was filled with gas um, to keep the house up and running because we had no air conditioning. Um, never complained once about that. Um, very rarely complained when I'd have to leave the house in the middle of the night or leave dinner or um, not be able to go on a trip because of work. Uh, so I thank her a great deal on both of my my daughters, uh, Cassie and Shale, have been very supportive. Um, Shale was nice enough not to um, be born until the uh, night the power came back on. Um, we think it was probably because the air conditioner was back on, and so she's very fond of air conditioning. Um, so, uh, but they've been great as well because they've uh, we've missed a lot um, with this job, and as a lot of firefighters and first responders do. So they're they're my they're the true heroes, the ones that are at home supporting us. Um, so thank you again um, for your kind words. Um, it's been my honor to serve this village for 26 years, um, and I uh, well, hope to see you guys at at the beach, um, preferably with not so much white sand, which we're calling snow right now down there. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Um, for your remarks and again for your service. All right, we will move on to our report from our village manager, Mr. Brayman. Thank you, President Polinski. Two brief items. One is uh, I'd like to acknowledge and thank our public works crews who have been working very hard over the past month, uh, 12 hour shifts uh, on a regular basis. And it's really hard, grueling work to clear our streets. They're doing an outstanding job. And it's a lot of time away from their families. So th thank you to, to those employees over at EPW. And also a, a very brief uh, update on the COVID-19 vaccine. And we'll, we'll have additional information in our e-news this week. Uh, but we did update our website today with direct links to all the pharmacies, hospitals, and other venues where residents can look for appointments and sign up for appointments in Cook County, uh, trying to make it a little bit easier than going straight to that Cook County vaccine website that's somewhat cumbersome to use. So we will also include that at the top of our e-news on Friday, and we'll keep pushing out information as it becomes available. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brayman. Uh, Mr. Stein, uh, any report from the Corporation Counsel's Office tonight? No report, Mr. President. Uh, next item on the agenda is item five, and that's the report of the Liquor Control Commissioner, and there's no report tonight. Uh, so we will move on to our standing committee <coughs> reports. Uh, first up is uh, the land use committee uh, with Trustee Barrow. Uh, all items are on the consent agenda. Uh, the finance committee had one item on the consent agenda. Uh, Trustee Dodd, the administration committee. As Trustee Sullivan said, we had a lengthy consent agenda, but all items were listed on consent. And approved. So we're moving forward there. Um, 
<laughs> Next is the uh, Municipal Services Committee, and that is Trustee Solomon. And unlike my other colleagues, we have one item this evening. Uh, that is item 6.41, which is the presentation of the Master Bike and Active Transportation Plan. And uh, this is a, we're, we're excited to bring this forward to the board and the community. A lot of work has been done, and I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Berger Raish to, to kick it off and, and lead the discussion with us. And, and I'm going to uh, step in front of, I'm going to step in front of her and, and, and lay out. That wasn't what Brayman told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brayman, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Ms. Berger. Um, okay, so. We are not voting on anything tonight. That's the first thing I want to let people know. Um, tonight is a presentation by staff. Um, and as usual with uh, what accompanies a presentation by staff is questions uh, from the board. And I think, uh, is it accurate to say we've got some of the consultants uh, here as well? Yes. Excellent. So we, we will be able to ask uh, the staff and the consultants questions. Um, after that happens, um, I will open it up to public comment, see if there's anybody who would like to make a comment. Again, we're not voting on it tonight, but uh, people will be able to make comments. And then um, I will open the floor for the trustees if they would like to comment uh, on it. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, Ms. Berger and she can uh, uh, lead the presentation. Thank you, President Belinsky and Village Board. We are so excited to have the opportunity to present the highlights of the Village's draft Master Bike and Active Transportation Plan tonight. Um, as Trustee, or I'm sorry, President Belinsky noted, we're just going to talk about the plan tonight, and then at the next Village Board meeting on the 23rd, uh, we'll introduce a resolution to adopt the plan on the consent agenda. So this plan is several years in the making and we want to thank the village board for funding it and the hundreds of community members, the Transportation Commission and the Municipal Services Committee who helped shape the final version. Building a multimodal transportation network in an urbanized established community like Wilmette is very challenging, um, but we believe that the final plan strikes the right balance between providing a safe and inviting network while also being sensitive to traffic needs, on-street parking, and protecting the village's urban canopy. It is important to point out, as, trust, as President Belinsky stated, this is only a concept plan and it's really the beginning of the discussion. Um, the board is not approving any individual components of the plan at this time. Implementation of specific in initiatives and network improvements will require additional engineering, review and approval of the Transportation Commission, including inviting all the residents who are live and reside on network um, network improvements, as well as uh, village board review and um, approval of the spending. So there's a lot of work yet to be done. Um, so now I'd like to introduce the consulting team who will give the presentation. Um, presenting tonight are Jackie Henriksen of Civil Tech and Heather Shady of the Active Transportation Alliance. So I think Jackie's going to kick us off. Great, thank you, Bridget. And I will go ahead and share the presentation. OK. Thumbs up if you can see it. We can see it, yep. OK, great, thank you. All right, so just to give a brief overview of what we'll cover. So first, we're going to give an overview of the project and what was involved with that. And then Heather is going to give an overview of the high level findings from community engagement. And we'll also um, point out some highlights from the plan and, and the recommendations. And then the requested action, as Bridget mentioned, is um, for the village board to approve the, the plan on the February 23rd agenda. So here is a, is a high level timeline of the project. Um, so we kicked it off in May of 2018, and we started it out with a robust round of community engagement as well as an existing conditions analysis. We then drafted some recommendations, which we presented to the public for another round of community engagement. And then we finalized, or, or we finalized the draft plan based on um, what we heard, and we presented it to the Transportation Commission in two presentations as well as the Municipal Services uh, Committee as well. And I will hand it over to Heather now to go into um, some high-level details and benefits of the plan. Thanks, Jackie. 
Um, so as Bridget mentioned earlier, this this is a plan. This document is not a full blown engineering study and did not include an engineering study for any single one of the recommendations within it. So what a plan does is it provides a roadmap for the to help the village prioritize future projects when opportunities become available. This could be federal funding initiatives available through the Illinois Department of Transportation, the Chicagoland Metropolitan Agency for Planning, or one of the um, Northwest Municipal Conference, or it could be incorporated into the village's capital improvement program as roads are being considered for improvements that also intersect with the plan. Um, this is, as Bridget mentioned, a concept level plan. Um, there's still a lot to be determined within each of those recommendations to make sure they're the, the best that are available for the village at the time they're implemented. Um, and it uh, provides a, just a list of best practices and a menu of options. So many of the things that we've considered for specific roads can be implemented elsewhere in the village if, they, if they're deemed appropriate. Again, though, those will be need to be need to be studied as, over time to make sure that they actually are. Um, so I'll just again reiterate um, this plan is, is that it's a plan. It, it will not be able to be implemented immediately and it's not final. Uh, there will be many opportunities for the village, the residents, staff and the board to consider these recommendations as they move forward, um, weigh in more heavily on how they might be fully formed and also um, make sure that they're incorporated in the best way possible. Next slide, please, Jackie. So um, there's a lot of reasons to implement um, projects that benefit cyclists, pedestrians, drivers, and, and all modes of transportation. But in particular, walking and biking can really play an, an important role in a community in, in, in a variety of different ways. Um, I won't touch on every single thing that we have on this slide. There's lots of data and studies out there that um, I'm happy to share if you're interested. Um, but just some things to think about um, as you're considering streets for everyone. Um, first is safety. Streets that are designed to prioritize cyclists, pedestrians, um, and the more vulnerable users of the road are safer for everybody. Uh, there's data out there that shows that Things like traffic calming put in place on roads can help reduce automobile crashes and pedestrian injuries by up to 15%. Um, so by thinking about a transportation network holistically um, in terms of who's using it, where they're going, and what's the highest and best facility available to them, um, you really create a, a safe and effective transportation network that serves the whole population. Having um, an active transportation plan can also help you make more cost effective decisions. Oftentimes without an absence of a plan, decisions are made that um, serve vehicle traffic um, and often forget to incorporate pedestrian, bicycle, or even transit de related designs. Um, and this can mean missing out on opportunities available for other agencies to incorporate those facilities within projects they're leading. It can result in missing out on grant opportunities that might be available to, if you have a plan available to your community. Um, and it can also mean that you might miss an opportunity with a resurfacing project to make an improvement that would really benefit um, the neighborhood. So again, this having this plan can help just create a better framework for cost effective decision making. And then finally, I'll just touch on the social aspects of walking and biking within a community. So we've we've seen, especially during the pandemic, that more and more people are walking and biking in their in their neighborhoods and within their community than they ever have, or at least have in decades. Um, especially during the strict stay at home orders, um, getting out in the community has been a way that we've been able to maintain our social connectivity, even while we're social distancing. And the, I think because of that, the pandemic has really helped remind many communities just how important the, their streets are to their social fabric. Um, and I'm hoping that this trend will continue um, as we move forward and, and move into recovery, uh, that people will remember that streets are, are places, are social places and places where we can create community just like our, our neighborhood is. Uh, next slide, please, Jackie. So just uh, briefly, this is the, um, table of contents for the plan. Um, we'll be going in over each of these in a very high level of detail. 
um, and I won't read through them in specifics right now, but um, I will note that if you do look through the plan, you'll note that there's a little pedestrian or bicycle icon where recommendations touch on one or both of those issues. Um, so we made it a little easier to find recommendations um, if you're looking for a specific mode. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, as Jackie mentioned, I'll talk a little bit about our public engagement process. Um, this plan has had a very robust public engagement process dating back to the summer of 2018. Uh, since we launched the planning project, we posted five focus group meetings with different um, specific stakeholder groups within the community. We held two open houses, tabled at Summerfest and Go Green Well Met. We held community office hours where we spoke to about 15 different residents about, in depth about specific issues. We presented at three Transportation Commission meetings, the Municipal Services Committee, and throughout the length of the process, we were accepting comments online through a web form. We also hosted an online interactive map at the beginning of the project um, that you'll see in the lower right-hand corner of your screen where we asked residents to comment on specific um, questions we had related to where they found challenging walking areas, biking areas, difficult intersections to cross, um, and destinations they'd like to see improvements for access. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so in total, we talked to um, hundreds of people, uh, about 369 people submitted comments um, online or attended an event. 111 individuals put 465 points on the map I mentioned earlier, and we had over 4,000 unique visitors to the project um, site since June of 2018. In total of the people that we were able to track where they were coming from, 91% of the folks we spoke to live within Wilmette and another 4% work in Wilmette. Um, so that's a pretty good representation of, of people that live in the area and are interested in walking and biking and improving transportation. Next slide, please. Um, and as I mentioned, we spent, um, with every conversation we had and with every step of the plan we took, we really tried to iterate and, and understand the issues and try to make them, make the recommendations um, more reflective of the community's needs and desires. So in the first phase of our public engagement process, um, we worked with re residents to identify barriers and opportunities to improving walking and biking. Um, and we spent a lot of time learning about the specific locations and challenges that are affecting people's ability to get around. Um, we also just heard a lot about people's goals and desires for what they wanna see Wilmette look like in the future. And the words we heard often are, were that we, people wanted to see a multimodal community that's context sensitive, safe, people focused, accessible, and connected. In the second phase of engagement, um, we had developed draft recommendations that we were prepared to present to the community in, in a variety of different formats. And we um, posted those out in the project site for review, presented them in a public meeting, and held office hours, as I mentioned. Um, so again, we were looking for opportunities to better the recommendations to make sure we didn't miss anything or mis misunderstand what people were telling us. Um, so in this phase of engagement, we learned about different neighborhood and block level concerns related to specific recommendations we had. We heard differing opinions on what the best facility type was, um, depending on a person's perspective. We heard a lot about de of desire for more treatments and more locations, and we also heard a lot of support for a lot of the projects that we identified. Then finally, we met with the Transportation Commission um, several, a couple of times last year, and during that, we helped, the Transportation Commissioners were really beneficial in helping us further clarify recommendations in the plan. And some specific things they helped us um, to identify were um, to include uh, a note about bike share facility or bike share feasibility, um, adding some new education and encouragement initiatives. And they also thought about a lot about the process for moving forward and identifying recommendations. Um, and they asked that we include a note to host an annual transportation commission review of the plan to make sure that nothing has changed or that projects are moving forward. Um, so again, that was a, a very helpful comment and something that I think will really help this plan um, get implemented in a meaningful way over time. 
So now I'll turn it back over to Jackie, who will talk about the existing conditions assessment and the recommendations. Great, thank you, Heather. So, um, so a lot of the recommendations were a huge component of, of it was the community engagement findings. Um, in addition to that, we also did an analysis of the existing data that we had available. Um, this was data related to crashes, um, different roadway characteristics. We also reviewed previous plans and studies, village policies, and we also got on our bikes and um, and looked at the the roadways and um, encountered different. We we saw what it was like to bike and to walk around the community through a bike field work day. So um, so here this this is just very high level. Some of the many different impacts and trade offs that we were considering when we were looking at different corridors and considering different recommendations for those corridors. Um, so we were looking at how this re these recommendations could impact safety, um, how they could impact parking, traffic, um, and we looked at how it would improve east-west connectivity. Um, so if there was community support for the recommendations. Um, so these were all things that we were considering as we were building out the network. And then so based on the that first round of community feedback, as well as the existing conditions analysis, we proposed a village wide network of um, of bike connections. So the that the idea here was to find ways to connect everyone in the community so that that they would be near a bike facility so they could get east, west, north, south and connect to key destinations. So so throughout the the uh, village wide network, we also considered the comfort level. So this would be the comfort level if the if the recommendation was implemented. So some of them are listed as higher comfort. And for the most part, those are recommendations that would provide more sep uh, more separation for a bicyclist and lower comfort are recommendations where there would be more mixing with traffic um, such as assigned bike route. Um, so this slide here, this is showing the different facility types that we were recommending and the left side have has would be considered the least comfortable because um, that would in involve less separation for cyclists. And then so, for example, the signed bike route mark shared lanes, there would be the bicyclists would be mixing with traffic more. And then as you go to the right, there are more robust bike facility recommendations such as bike lanes. Um, and then side paths and trails, which would be total separation from traffic. So depending on the context of the street, um, the data that we looked at, what we heard from the community, we recommended different facilities or um, a few different options on each of the corridors. So, um, so in some cases, it wasn't evident what the preferred alternative would be on that roadway. Um, and so for some of these roadways, we have uh, multiple options that we see based on the data that we see now. We see that there could be multiple ways to redesign the roadway, um, but it would involve further study to determine that preferred alternative. Um, but something I should note too is that even if there is a preferred alternative listed in the plan, um, as we've mentioned before, there would need to be further study. Um, to look at the feasibility of it with an engineering study. So um, as Heather mentioned before, the table of contents, it indicates where um, where recommendations are focusing on bicyclists or pedestrians. Um, but we do have a dedicated section in the plan to pedestrians. And these are just some of the, the left side shows some of the top pedestrian destinations that we heard about during engagement that people want to be able to more safe, safely reach by foot. And then the right side are some of the barriers that we either observed through, through data, field work, and also through talking to the community. So these would be barriers to walking and bike or, or walking, such as sidewalk gaps um, and difficulties with crossings. So there is a map in the plan um, that 
was added after the municipal services committee um, because we heard that it would that um, there was a need to more to better highlight the pedestrian recommendations in the plan. Um, so all of these recommendations were in uh, the previous plan from the Transportation Commission, but we highlighted them on a map to make it to, to really call out the recommendations for pedestrians and make it um, easier to understand them. So um, so this map here, it shows sidewalk gaps and these are based on uh, the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning did a um, did a region wide audit of um, of all the sidewalks in the region and um, so we have that data from from them here and then also the numbers one through eight are different priority recommendations for um, improving pedestrian safety and these again were were based on uh, mostly based on what we heard during community engagement so these are problem spots that could really use improvement and also um, through looking at data such as the crash analysis And then we also have some recommendations. We have a toolkit for different designs to consider as um, as you're building out the pedestrian network and also improving crossings at key locations. So, so the plan also has some um, sort of bigger, more visionary concepts um, and the Eden's pedestrian overpass underpass this is one of them, and um, and again, this would in, uh, include future study, feasibility studies, rounds of engagement. Um, but but something we heard as a recurrent theme was that people would really like a safer, uh, more separated crossing to get across the Edens. Um, so this is one proposal. So in addition to all of the infrastructure recommendations, um, to also to, to implement the plan and get people excited about walking and biking and feeling um, feeling safer about it as well, we have a section on different um, initiatives and these are related to safety, education, encouragement, awareness, convenience, and community. And and these initiatives, we we looked at what was all what what was already happening in the village um, and we also talked to community members um, to develop these ideas. So the the final part of the plan includes a chapter on implementation. So this is looking at all of the corridor wide um, recommendations and giving a prioritization level for them. And this was mostly based on um, the feasibility of the recommendations connectivity, um, the impacts that it would have on safety, um, and the connectivity to destinations and costs. Um, and then the final part, we have potential funding programs that are related to walking and biking um, that the village could consider when applying for grant opportunities to build out this network. So the, the next step would be um, to, to accept any questions, to take any questions from, from you all. And, um, and, then, and then after that, we would ask for the village board to approve the plan at the February 23rd meeting. Um, any questions for, uh, from the trustees, for the staff, or for our consultants? Thank you for coming out tonight and, and making the presentation. We appreciate that. I have a question for Bridget. <laughs> Go ahead, Trustee Plunkett. Sure. So, um, um, Bridget, if you could maybe just give an example or two of, you know, if we've adopted this plan, how do you use it? What What's the first step? How does How does the board? When does the board view this plan? When does staff view this plan? Um, if you could just give, I'm, I'm sure there's many examples, but if you could just maybe give an example or two of how this plan would be used in um, be used in the future and in, in future decision making. Sure. Thank you, Trustee Plunkett, for the question. The um, 
first of all, this was a huge step, but the village staff now has a lot of work to do to implement the plan or make recommendations to implement the plan. And the first thing that we're going to do is in conjunction with our development of the five year capital improvement program, we are going to um, take a look at all of our planned road projects, sewer projects, water projects, and then overlay the recommendations for bike and pet improvements to see where they're, they intersect. So we can um, include that in the five year CIP. So we're also going to talk to our state and county neighbors um, that have jurisdiction and will met on state and county roads to see if we can um, partner with them on any of their future projects um, with our bike and pet initiatives. And then we're also going to actively seek out grant opportunities and see um, what projects in Wilmette from a bike and ped perspective would be good fits for future grants. Um, so I would say for the next several months, our staff is going to take a look at all these different areas and um, we probably won't have the five year plan presented for this year's CIP because we also are going to take it to the Transportation Commission and invite the community to also comment on our five year recommendations. So our timeline is is probably next year in conjunction with the CIP when we take it to the board for review. Um, that would also be the opportunity for the board to take a look at our five year bike and ped plan uh, implementation schedule. Thank you. So Bridget, this is Trustee Dodd, and I kind of want to ask a follow up question to uh, what Trustee Plunkett asked. So um, that, thank you. That was helpful. So there on, you know, one of the slides that was presented was kind of the implementation and it kind of showed like the low, medium, high and things. So can you just are, can, you started to get there, but can you just talk about so this implementation, it has like high, medium, low, but could some of those things change and are, do you plan to take those and kind of build them out into a five year plan? Could you just kind of articulate that a little more? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think from a just from a hierarchy perspective, our first criteria is going to be looking at our immediate road projects and, and planned capital projects. Um, that is easy to um, overlay the two and see where they intersect. Um, again, counting to, you know, looking at other opportunities um, between state and county agencies. And then once we've kind of fleshed all that out, projects that we know we're building in the next five years, then we're going to take a look at the implementation maps that um, Jackie has up on the screen. And, and I, I'm thinking of things like um, low cost, high impact projects that provide connectivity that's important to the community. I think those are the types of network recommendations that are going to rise to the top and, and make their way into the five year plan. I as um, Jackie mentioned, the multi million dollar overpass tunnels, um, anything that has a, a lot of cost um, of, uh, associated with it will more than likely be grant funded and those will um, likely take place uh, several years down the road. Other questions? Trustee Barrow, you're a, you're a bicycling um, uh, enthusiast. Uh, yeah, I've been in touch with uh, several of my uh, uh, cycling friends and uh, they the support for this plan uh, is pretty consistent. Uh, it really reflects, uh, I think, uh, a real comprehensive plan, a real thoughtful plan. And uh, there's been plenty of opportunity for community involvement and actual community involvement. Uh, the uh, friends of mine that have spoken about it, you know, have questioned one part or another part, but uh, I don't think our purpose tonight is to go that deep into the weeds. Uh, I think there'll be plenty of time to talk about whether a particular street should be this or should be that. Uh, but I, I certainly support it. And I and I think that uh, my friends that are active cyclists uh, do also. Questions from uh, for the staff for our consultants. OK, um, so I will. Uh, go to public comment next and then we'll come back to the trustees just for closing thoughts. Um, you know, Trustee Sullivan is chair of municipal services may have something to add here. Um, and I've got 
a little bit to say as well. So, but first, uh, public comment. So again, uh, you'll have to hear my speech again. It's a lot longer when I can't just ask people to raise their hands. Um, uh, at an in-person meeting uh, during public comment, uh, you'd be allotted three minutes to address the board. Uh, this meeting is remote, and so uh, there were a number of public comments relating to the uh, uh, plan that were submitted in advance of the meeting, and, and we've been provided with those, and they are part of the public record, uh, but we're not going to read them uh, during the meeting. If you are watching on YouTube Live uh, and would like to submit a comment, uh, you can uh, enter that comment into the chat window, which is to the right of the video window. And while they are typing, uh, there are some uh, individuals from the public that are still in the meeting. And so if any uh, individuals who are connected to the meeting via Teams or via the telephone would like to address the board, I would ask uh, those individuals to identify themselves now. Again, you have to unmute yourself and you dialed in, you gotta hit star six first. So I'll be saying star six in my uh, sleep, I think. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh there, Trusty Dodd. <laughs> um, anybody who would like to address the board? Okay, um, hearing none, um, I will go back to Mr. Skiles. And uh, uh, Mr. Skiles, are there, is there anyone that um, submitted a comment via uh, the YouTube uh, live chat feature? Yes, President Polinsky. There is uh, a few comments from um, a user Sander Audio, who began with, thank you, Chief Wozni from Highland Avenue, first of all. Okay. And then um, they observed, would it be an idea to get a curb protected bike lane along Wilmette or Glenview Avenue to get from downtown Wilmette to the North Branch Trail is the first question. And then uh, they followed up with an FYI that says, I moved to Highland Avenue in 2020 and missed most of the discussion phase. I grew up in the Netherlands where curb protected bike lanes are standard along through roads. And that's the end of the comments. Well, in response, um, Ms. Berger, those have all been kind of the, 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 the sort of scope of this, of this study in terms of recommendations and the like, um, uh, without getting into specifics and the the sort of benefits or not of that, I mean that's all within the realm of the future decisions that could be made by the by the the village and then by the village board itself. Correct. That's correct. Okay. All right, so thank you for that comment. Um, any other comments, uh, Mr. Skiles, from YouTube Live? Uh, no other comments. Okay, great. So again, uh, we won't be voting on this uh, this evening. Uh, we will be voting on the plan at the next board meeting, but I will open the floor uh, to any trustees who would like to make some comments at the time. And, and uh, Trustee Sullivan, this is the Municipal Services Committee, so I'll, I'll yield the floor to you first uh, with any thoughts that you have. I, no, I appreciate that, President Blinsky, and I think how you introduced this along with Ms. Berger um, said it exactly right. Uh, this is a concept and it took a lot of work on a number of uh, people's efforts, uh, both employees, board members, and our residents. Um, and I want to commend uh, the staff for leading this to this point, as well as our consultants. Uh, we did have a very good discussion at Municipal Services at the end of last year and, and compliment to uh, Trustee Kurzman and Kennedy. Uh, because it was a very good discussion as a, uh, one, one of our more enjoyable committee meetings because uh, a lot of participation and, and uh, give and take and thoughts on that. And uh, you can see that this is a, a this is an important plan to finally get in place. Um, and I think Bridget said it well that, you know, this is a challenge given we're a nearly 150 year old community and uh, probably wouldn't, she wouldn't develop it if we gave her a blank sheet of paper land. Uh, we might do things differently uh, to accommodate this so you know doing the best we can and, and this is some ideas um some of the ideas are out there um but uh you know it was we wanted to put this together and, and really appreciate where we are and everybody's uh support and we'll see where it goes thank you uh trustee Sullivan. any other trustees who would like to um comment here at this point in time yeah please and just briefly um what I really like about the the plan and its its vision is the uh, I guess in my mind it kind of is a retrofit to the village like the way I see it like a lot of our village was designed and built with the car almost exclusively in mind especially in the west and 
you know, that doesn't always hold, you know, and uh, I think especially younger residents, future residents will really appreciate the time and effort that we've taken to evaluate how to make the community more friendly for bikes. I think that's what homeowners will be demanding. And so I think we're doing a service to the village moving forward to have done this effort. And I agree with Trustee Sullivan's characterization of, you know, all the energy and effort that went into it. And so um, I'm just really excited that it gives us this opportunity moving forward. Thank you, Trustee Kurzman. Um, I would just say, you know, I want to thank all the residents uh, who were involved here. My recollection serves me correctly. We actually appointed an ad hoc committee of, of sort of bicycle experts to help uh, draft the scope of the uh, the RFP here. And, and so I thank them and I thank the Transportation Commission as well as the staff and our consultants for their hard work here. You know, this is what's great about this is it's a framework for our future decisions. Um, you know, on the 23rd, we're not going to be voting to approve this improvement on this block or this change to this neighborhood. Um, and, and as the consultants and, and Ms. Berger said, it, the, the plan is not final, it's not permanent, but, but it, it, it creates a framework to assist in our future decision making. So when we're addressing, as, as Ms. Berger mentioned, when we're addressing improvements to our infrastructure in our neighborhood, the plan prompts us to you know, take into account active transportation type improvements that we can make uh, and include in part of the project. So it's, it's necessary for us to complete this plan, otherwise we'll be making decisions in a vacuum and without sort of any perspective on on a village-wide impact or, or a larger context. So uh, it's, it's really great that we've got it to this point. Um, it's it's the beginning, not an end uh, for the, you know, the improvements to our infrastructure. And I uh, really appreciate the work uh, of all who contributed uh, to this plan. Others? Trustee Barrow, you, you sort of gave your, your thoughts uh, earlier in terms of what you'd heard from your bicycling friend, um, Trustee Dodd or Trustee Plunkett. Don't feel an obligation, but you know, just want to make sure you're uh, 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 given the opportunity. Um, I think just in terms of financial, um, I remember when we approved, um, when we put this plan that we were going to go forward in the budget a couple of years ago, we were really thinking, you know, we get this plan done and it was grant funding and outside funding. And I think that that was a big part of our decision making when we decided to go forward with this. And I think that having this plan allows us to seek that grant funding. I mean, certainly there are some things in this plan that we can't afford, <laughs> but it it is a good uh, it's a good start. And I think it's good for residents to know that there are a lot of grants out there right now for pedestrian, for bikes. Um, it's a hot topic now. So I really think that this allows us to kind of, you know, hopefully get a bite out of that apple. Trustee Dodd? I would just um, agree with everything that everybody said. So, you know, I just want to. I've spent a lot of time talking to the staff over the last few days um, or weeks. So just thank you to the residents and staff and everybody to help us get to this place. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for us to have this plan and I'm excited to see what comes out of it. Excellent. Well, I believe, um, Ms. Berger, anything else uh, from you or from our consultants, Mr. Brayman, Mr. Stein, anybody, anybody has something to, to add to the conversation at this point? Or if not, we would move on. No? no, nothing to add nothing from the staff. Here. OK, all right. Very good. Um, thank you again uh, to everyone um, and thank you to the consultants tonight for um, making the presentation. We appreciate that. Uh, Trustee Sullivan, back to you. I feel like you want to talk some more President Belinsky, but otherwise I don't have anything else. No, no, no. <laughs> no I'm good. I just all other uh, items were approved on consent. Okay, very good. Uh, Public Safety Committee is Trustee Kurzman. All items covered on consent. Uh, item six point six is the Judiciary Committee, and that is Trustee Plunkett. 
All items covered on consent. So item 6.7 is reports from special committees and there are no reports tonight. Uh, item 7 is new business. There's no additional new business to discuss. Item 8 is adjournment. Uh, so may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is That was Trustee Sullivan. Is there a second? Second. Uh, that was <laughs> Trustee Dodd. Uh, I now ask uh, Mr. Hallgren to please call the roll on the motion. Trustee Sullivan. Aye. Trustee Barrow. Aye. Trustee Dodd. Aye. Trustee Kersman. Aye. Trustee Plunkett. Aye. And President Polinski. Aye. So the motion carries. Uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. It's yeah, 841. Thank you.